In this video for Math 98, we're going to look at examples from homework number 4. These are like problems 1 through 13 on the homework, covering sections 12.5, which covers the topic of rational equations. A rational equation is nothing more than an equation involving rational expressions. Let's look at an example. 1 ninth plus 1 over x equals 1 third. Rational equations, like this one, often have a variable in the denominator. And because of that, you have to be careful when solving rational equations. You may need to exclude possible values for, uh, for x, because there may be values for x that make the denominator 0. Take a look at this one. This denominator is 9, this denominator is 3, this denominator is x. Certainly, x cannot equal to 0, for if it did, that would result in a zero denominator. We know that cannot be possible. So, we have to exclude the value x equals zero. That's not a possible solution to this equation. Here's one that's a little bit different. One over x minus seven equals four over x plus two. Here, you cannot have the denominator x minus seven equals zero, well, so x cannot equal seven. And here, x plus 2 cannot equal 0, so x cannot equal negative 2. So we'll again have to exclude the values x equals 7 and negative 2 in this case. Now take a look at this one. This is a rational equation, even though this first expression does not involve a denominator. Remember, you can always write this as something over 1, so each of these has a denominator. What values need to be excluded from this rational equation? Well, we know that 2x cannot equal 0, or x cannot equal 0. These denominators are fine. doesn't matter what x is. They're not going to change. But here, x cannot equal 0, so we have to exclude that value. This is important in the process of solving rational equations. Here's a method for doing so. To solve a rational equation, one way that I do this is to find the lowest common denominator. This may involve factoring denominators to determine what these factors actually are. Number two, I like to multiply both sides of my equation by the lowest common denominator. Don't forget about the distributive property, very important in this case. Then you should solve the resulting equation. It will either be linear or quadratic. And you should check your answers. In particular, you want to look for if you accidentally got an answer that you need to exclude, because it would result in the zero denominator. Take a look at this simple rational equation. 1 over 9 plus 1 over x equals 3. What is the lowest common denominator? Well, we have a denominator of 9 and a denominator of x, so we'll need both a 9 and an x. Those don't have anything in common. And we also have a denominator of 3, but 3 divides 9 so 9x is my lowest common denominator. Now, I'd like to multiply both sides of the equation by 9x. Now, don't forget the distributive property. I'm going to take this 9x, and I'm going to distribute that in there. So 9x times 1 ninth plus 9x times 1 over x. That gives you x plus... 9. And over here, we're going to cancel a 3 and a 9. That gives you 3x. So this is a nice, simple linear equation. I'll write it over here. Subtract x from both sides. Get 9 equals 2x. So x equals 9 halves, or 4 and a half. Now, that's not 0, so this doesn't need to be excluded. It doesn't hurt to check your answer, though and I'll leave that to you. However, this cannot be, does not need to be excluded because it didn't end up with an answer of zero. Here's another example. What is the lowest common denominator in this case? Well, the first denominator is x minus seven. The second denominator is x plus two, and x plus two is not a factor of x minus seven, so I need both of these. I'm gonna take that value, and I'm gonna multiply it both sides. So I wrote multiplying the left-hand side, and I multiply on the right-hand side. Let's think about 
anything that we can divide out here, x minus 7 and x minus 7, this remains x plus 2. This one, x plus 2 and x plus 2. This is 4 times x minus 7. x plus 2 equals 4x minus 28. Distributing the 4. Trying to solve that, I get x plus 30 by moving the 28 over equals 4x. Subtract x, I get 30 equals 3x, or x equals 10. Now, once again, this is not one of the restricted inputs, 7 or negative 2. You can check it, though, to make sure your arithmetic is correct. Here's one a little bit more difficult. The lowest common denominator here, notice these, is 2x. So I'm going to multiply 2x on the left-hand side and 2x on the right-hand side. Don't forget the distributive property. 2x times 5x is 10x squared. 2x times 43 over 2 gives me 43x. 2x's cancel or divide out here and I get 9. This is a quadratic equation. You are experts now, especially after last chapter, in solving quadratic equations. I'm going to move that 9 over. And I'll give you a moment to solve that, but that's going to end up factoring. And it will factor into 5x and 2x. And then I'm going to put a 9 here. That will give me a 45 and a 1 here. And this gives me my possible solutions. That means x equals 1 fifth or negative 9 halves. Now, neither of those values is the restricted value of 0. You can check those answers again. So as you see, it is possible to get more than one solution to a rational equation. How about the lowest common denominator here? Well, again, we have an x. 1, 1 goes in everything. Don't have to worry about that. And then an x times x plus 1. Well, the lowest common denominator, x times x plus 1, will work for each of these. Distribute in. x times x plus 1 times 2 over x plus x times x plus 1 times 4. Here, these denominators just cancel out and I get 20. Here, the x will cancel out. Get 2 times x plus 1 equal plus, excuse me, 4x times x plus 1 equals 20. Wow, that's a complicated one. Let me see what we can do here. Okay, distribute the 2. It's 2x plus 2. This is 4x squared plus 4x equals 20. That's 4x squared plus 6x plus 2 equals 20. Subtract the 20. I'm going to take out a 2. And again, believe it or not, this will factor. They don't all factor. I do want you to understand that... Sometimes you will have to use the quadratic formula, but this one does factor into this. I need a plus 3, so this gives me a 6. This gives me that. So that gives you 2x minus 3 equals 0, or x plus 3 equals 0. So x equals 3 halves, or negative 3. Neither of those are the restricted inputs of 0 or negative 1. You, again, can check these to see what happens here. Now, I've been saying to check your answers. Does it ever really happen that we have to do a restricted input? We'll take a look at this one. Lowest common denominator is x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply that on both sides. So I'll just do that over here. x 
So here I get this simple equation, x minus 1 equals 1, or x equals 2. But that is a problem. x can't equal 2, since this would result in a zero denominator. So therefore, there is no solution. I need to throw out that solution I got right there. So it can happen that you need to worry about that restricted. Now, what are some applications of these? One very common application of this is something called a work problem. And a work problem basically says you have two things, one working at a certain rate, one working at another, and how long does it take you for them to work together? Here's an example. One machine can complete a job in 12 hours. A second machine can complete the same job in 10 hours. How long will it take them working together? Now, a key concept in a work problem is this idea of the rate of work. If it takes x hours to complete a job, the rate of work is 1 over x. Now, what that means is that, for example, if it took 10 hours to complete a job, then it's reasonable to assume that after one hour, you have one-tenth of the job completed. So the idea behind a rate of work is how much do you have of the complete job completed in one hour? So I'm going to make a little table here. I'm going to have rate of work times hours work equals portion of job completed. Our first machine has a rate of work of 12, has can complete a job in 12 hours. So its rate of work is 1 12. Our second machine complete a job in 10 hours. So its rate of work is 1 10, meaning it does 1 10th of the job in 1 hour. Let's let t equal the total time worked. So they both are working the same amount of time. So after t hours, this is t over 12. And after t hours, this is t over 10. And you can assume that these machines are going to stop when they've got one whole job completed. So here's an example of how to do this. In this case, this is a pretty easy problem to solve. I can multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator, which for 10 and 12 is going to be 60. <coughs> that gives me 60t over 12, or 5t, plus 60t over 10, or 6t equals 60, or 11t equals 60. So t equals 60 over 11 hours. That's how long it will take these two working together. Now, that was sort of a long solution. Here's a shortcut. The first machine can do the job in 1 12th. They can do it in 12 hours, so 1 12th is its rate of work. The second machine can do the job in 10 hours, so 1 10th is its rate of work. Together, these operate like a single machine who has a rate of work, let's call R. This is another rational equation that is equivalent to this one up here. If you solve this, you should get the same solution. And I'm going to use this method to solve this second one. One worker can paint a house in nine hours, so their rate of work is one ninth. A second worker is needed as they must finish the job in four hours. So together, they have to finish the job in four hours. So the rate of work that combined together they have to be is one-fourth. The second worker, we don't know how long it takes him to do, but let's just say it takes him X hours, hours for second worker, to complete the job. So his rate of work is 1 over x. 
Here we have another rational expression, a rational equation, pretty easy to solve. Lowest common denominator is 36x. 36x, 1 ninth plus 1 over x. 36x times 1 quarter. Distribute the 36x. That's 36x times 1 ninth plus 36x times 1 over x equals 9 over x. That's 36x divided by 4. Here you get 4x plus 36 equals 9x. Subtract the 4x. 36 equals 5x. So x equals 36 fifths. That would be the rate of how long for the second worker to complete the job. I don't care in these problems whether you solve them this way or you solve them the way that I did the previous problem. I hope you found this video useful.